Inside Story reports on how the first Union Jack was hoisted and the circumstances in which it will be lowered one year from now. And we talked to Governor Chris Patton about his feelings being the last colonial executive to see the last jewel of the British Empire return to China, and some say uncertainty. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duty. So bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years. At the close of the Opium War, Britain takes possession of Hong Kong Island in 1841. By 1898, the Kowloon Peninsula and the new territories become part of the Crown Colony. Well, in the middle of the last century, of course, it was a barren hill. I mean, the same as Lord Palmerston said when we took over in 1841, a barren rock with hardly a house upon it. Dan Waters makes it his business knowing about Hong Kong's past. It's a job that can be difficult these days. Here you can see along here all these high-rise buildings which have been built during the last 10 or 15 years. If you wander along Conduit Road now, uh, you can only see about three pre-World War II buildings. And directions are needed to get to the location where the British first staked its claim on the territory two and a half years before China officially gave it up. So how did you find out about Possession Street? Well, as I told you, I came to Hong Kong in 1954, and to be perfectly truthful, I'd been here four or five years before I'd heard about it. I happened to mention to an old chap, a friend of mine, a Chinese friend, uh, and he said, oh, I'll take you there. And so he took me out one lunchtime to Possession Street and showed me around. And in those days, it was quite different. And the park is either right or uh, the park is here, look. Uh, you have to speculate. We need to speculate where the flag sure. pole would have been actually hoisted and also uh, what actually went on. Just a few more steps, an unassuming park in Western, a place where the Union Jack went up on a small mount later to be known as Possession Point. And of course then they got these uh, photographs from various places. You can see here's one here, Possession Point 1841, you say. That date has special meaning for Michaela Bremer Metcalf. Well, this is um, one of the actions that he was involved in. It's the capture of Chusan. He was Commodore Sir J.G. Bremer, Michaela's ancestor. We landed on Monday, the 25th of January, 1841, at 15 minutes past 8 a.m. And being the bona fide first possessors, Her Majesty's health was drunk with three chairs on Possession Mount. On the 26th, the squadron arrived. The Marines were landed, the Union Jack hoisted on our fort, and formal possession was taken of the island by Commodore Sir J. G. Bremer, accompanied by the four officers of the squadron. 1997 is next year, it's approaching. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you feel about that? Does it mean more to you? Um, being here in Hong Kong and being a direct well descendant. Well, obviously, it's a little bit more relevant, perhaps, because my descendant was the one who was repeatedly um, hoisted the Union flag over Hong Kong, and just by coincidence, we shall be here at the time when it's lowered. I should admit at this point that I did write to the governor about a year and a half ago, and I pointed out the historical connection with our family. Um, I received a very nice letter back from one of his departments saying that I was to contact um, them later this year when maybe the format of the ceremonies would be uh, finalized. While the handover is causing immeasurable anticipation, anxieties are gripping most of Hong Kong's six million plus residents who've made the once barren island into one of the most successful and competitive cities in the world. I feel a little bit risky. Yeah. Uh, because there will be some important change of the, the current situation, such as the economy and the, what they say, the legal system.
that reality will one country, two systems be a sure bet in keeping Hong Kong's economy and most important, way of life on the same track? In many respects, people say that 1997 is already here because the Chinese influence is everywhere. And also they are sending in all kinds of people to uh, overtly and covertly infiltrate the, the government, the banks, the mass media, the trade unions, they're everywhere. Do you think 1997 has already arrived? No, it hasn't. Uh, a lot of people are getting ready for it, but it hasn't arrived. This is still very much uh, a British-run colony with a rule of law and uh, uncertainty rules, but nevertheless, it's still very much Hong Kong, I think. But Beijing has become so involved in so many aspects of the day-to-day -day operations of Hong Kong now. That's been going on for years, you know. I don't know how long ago it is that Li Ka Sing gave a whole university to Swa Tau. Uh, everybody's been looking ahead and uh, developing good relations. And I suppose that's, especially from the businessman's point of view, is a very good thing indeed. With a year to go, it seems uncertainty still looms over Hong Kong. Just how much credibility will the Beijing-backed provisional legislature have? And what about matters concerning right of abode, the judiciary and infrastructure projects? This is sort of like a non the bottom. With transitional issues still posing problems, it hasn't been all smiles for Hong Kong's last colonial governor. But Christopher Patton believes his term of office so far has been a successful one that will hopefully leave an impression on the future. With the experience that you've had dealing with China and the liberal leaders in Hong Kong, you've come under criticism from both parties. Now, will you be doing anything differently in the next 365 days? No, and I don't think people expect me to. Um, you're quite right that there have been uh, some of the Democrats in uh, Hong Kong who say that I should have done far more, that I should have uh, ignored the constraints in the Joint Declaration and the Basic Law, and for example, as Emily Lau would argue, introduce complete democracy. Uh, on the Chinese side, there are some who uh, say um, the fact that he's uh, stood up for fair elections, um, for the Bill of Rights, for the rule of law, um, is a provocation and he should have just done what we wanted him to do. I think that by and large we've got things right. I think we've found a point of balance in the community. People know um, that uh, whoever I'm dealing with, whether it's the British government over visa-free access or whether it's the uh, government in Peking, that I stand up for Hong Kong uh, and I think and hope that they uh, appreciate that. And uh, I know that they'll expect a chief executive after me to stand up for Hong Kong. Is Hong Kong better off? today now than, let's say, four years ago before you came to Hong Kong? Oh, Hong Kong is certainly incomparably better off. Um, in the last uh, four years, just to take one um, small example, uh, our overall wealth as a community, our GDP, uh, has increased by about a quarter, by about 25% in real terms. That's after inflation. Hong Kong, despite um, all the predictions. One of the predictions was you couldn't stand up for Hong Kong's autonomy, for the rule of law, for Hong Kong's freedoms, and risk an argument with China without everything falling to pieces. Well, we've shown that that's not true. Uh, and I think that should have encouraged people to have a bit more self-confidence uh, in the way that uh, we uh, handle uh, those matters in relation to Peking. I think there is no doubt about it, in spite of the fact that I did not support Chris Patton's political reform, but I think we have now created a more transparent setup. What's holding some things up? Possibly uncertainty within the Chinese leadership. So there's a lot of factional uh, confrontation going on in Beijing, and nobody wants to put a foot wrong. And if you don't want to put a foot wrong, the safest thing is to do nothing. So there's an awful lot of doing nothing going on. And this means that when the uh, 30th of June 1997 comes, a lot of decisions will have to be taken very hurriedly in an ad hoc way, which is most unfortunate, but I, I don't see how it can be avoided. When we um, depart, uh, we should want people to think that we did our best, that we lived up to our highest ideals, uh, and uh, I hope that people will think we discharged our responsibilities honorably to Hong Kong and that we kept our word in the joint declaration and then we'll all see whether China keeps its word too. Um, but I hope that uh, after 1997, despite all that, people in China 
leaders in China will uh, recognize that uh, what they're getting in Hong Kong um, isn't just a piece of real estate, but that there are six million people here with hearts and minds that need to be um, uh, convinced that the future is going to be as successful as the past has been.